Hi everybody, Cynthia here. I'm back with my Jingle Jangle Christmas in July series and I had recently shared this really cute folio um, gift box on a previous video and I created it for gift tags, dimensional and flat gift tags. Um, but then as I was creating these yesterday, I thought, you know, you could stick all kinds of things in here. You don't just have to put gift tags in them. So I'm just calling it my Christmas Folio gift box, and I will open it up and share it with you guys. But before I get started, I'm just going to share what supplies I use to create these, because I know you, you guys usually ask me those questions. And then we're going to do a full tutorial on how to put this style together. Um, well, it's the same style, it's just this is the paper we're going to use today. And that paper I purchased from, let me set these aside, and we'll go through. So this paper here that I used on this one, including this 3D truck, kind of hold it at an angle, maybe you guys can see, that I put together, came from the Violet Studio and I purchased this on HSN as a package and it also came with some really pretty ribbon so I used this as my ribbon closure and actually I think we're going to need to get this out because I'm going to need a ribbon closure for the one I'm creating with you guys um, but it came with ribbons it came with this die cut and ready to layer paper pad and it basically has die cuts in it that you start with the first die cut. It, it takes you through, like this is A1, then you layer on A2, um, then you would layer on A3, and you'll get a three-dimensional um, embellishment. So I thought that was really cool because it matches the paper. You have your, even these um, come with some dimensional like your sentiments you can put together and make those dimensional as well. So I thought it was really cool. But as you could see, I used it to create the truck. And then I cut out the home for Christmas or got a Merry Christmas sentiment for the top here. And then I also used papers from the Home for Christmas paper pad. All right, so let me set this aside. Then these others, my little gingerbread one here that I made yesterday, and I'm just going to open it up. It's This one's not fully decorated, but I just wanted to share with you the different papers that are in it. I created this one and this one here. I love the gingerbread paper and the joy, and some of the insides are different. These little Nomi Santas are so cute. Um, the paper I used for that came from a friend actually, but I was shopping on Amazon this morning and I found this paper collection on Amazon. So I will post a link below to that. Also my gingerbread die to make this guy here, um, it also comes with a little dress. So you could put a dress on or the suspenders. This came from Amazon, and then the Christmas trees I used for this one, or just trees, I used this die set here, and that also came from Amazon. So I will post the little links below to everything if I can find it. And the Just For You at Christmas stamp um, came from a random one I have in my stash along with the Merry Christmas. It didn't come from like any particular um, stamp set that I can remember because I just have a lot of my stamps um, in CD cases. And then for these, I just used some plain green ribbon. 
I embossed some white paper with my snowflake embossing folder which I'll also post a link below to one of those if you need one and I'm just gonna show you really quick cuz I'm not gonna go through and decorate when I do the tutorial I'm not gonna decorate the fronts that's up to you to decorate on your own but basically all I did was run it through my embossing folder and then I just cut like little waves through the whole thing and then you just kind of layer up and I'll do it to this one as well just cut different wave patterns and then you just kind of layer them up like this and glue them and then put them on and then just trim and that's all I did so I just wanted to share that with you in case you guys um, wanted to know but anyway those are supplies I used so let's get started with I want to share with you besides putting in the gift tags and some of you may not have seen the video I showed um, the other day but it opens up like this and you have two pockets that you can put in flat oops, sorry flatter gift tags to gift to to someone okay come on now get back in there there we go um, and this one as well flatter type gift tags all right but in this one when I was creating it I thought you know you could put so many things in here oh my goodness so I'm gonna open this one up same way and inside here the front pocket I stuck in two sticker sheets and these are the foam um, sticker sheets that you can get from the Dollar Tree and what I did was I took out the acetate that's inside that these foam stickers are on and I just um, I cut myself like a little uh, you know measured it out so I could stuff it in the pocket and then I just took stickers off and put them on so that I could share some of these stickers with a friend so I put those in there and then in this side this pocket I created another gift pocket and inside that I have a gift card so this could hold a gift card holder okay so that I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas what you could do with these and then when you open it up this way it has two wider pockets they're about a half inch wide for dimensional gift tags so I have three of these really cute dimensional gift tags in this pocket here and then in this one I was able to get four of these dimensional gift tags so that's why we uh, I originally created this and it was also for a Pinterest project that I do with my friend Misha at scraps and things one hey Misha um, we were supposed to do a gift tag folio for dimensional tags and I thought why just put gift tags in it some people don't like making gift tags or you know getting them so besides the stickers here and the gift card on this side I packed up a bunch of my handmade um, embellishments and then I just used a scrap piece of the paper for a bag topper and then in this pocket I cut another piece of acetate from the Dollar Tree pack and I put some wooden um, gingerbread men and then this one is the wooden sentiments so you can gift embellishments in these and I'm really curious I have a pack here I want to try it I don't know it might be a little too wide but I was thinking you might be able to get make this into a hot cocoa um, folio so 
Let's see if I can kind of fold this a little. Yay! It works, guys. So you could put hot cocoa here. You could put your spoon and your mints and your marshmallows here. You can fold it, or you could do two hot cocoa packets. And then put your gift card here, a couple of goodies here. So yes, I'm so excited this works for hot cocoa because I want to give one to my niece. And I wasn't sure if I could fit the regular because we love the, the Swiss Miss cocoa. Um, but there's also a Land Lakes cocoa, which is a little narrower. Those might fit really perfect in here as well. And my husband said yesterday, of course, because his favorite are Hershey bars, like the regular long Hershey bars. He's like, I bet you could fit Hershey bars in there. So you could do like hot cocoa, a Hershey bar, gift card, whatever. So anyway, I've talked enough, I guess. I'm a, I'm a talker, so I apologize for that. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys some ideas of what I was using my folios for. And then that way... You know maybe it'll help you guys out so let's get started what you're gonna need and where did I put my stuff it's right here for the actual folio you're going to need a sheet that measures seven inches by eleven and a quarter and you want to line it up in your scoreboard at eleven and a quarter inches and you're gonna score at three, four and a quarter. Is it four and a quarter? Yes. Three inches, four and a quarter, seven and a quarter, and eight and a quarter. Okay. Let's fold up our score lines. And you're gonna notice your one spine, which I'll show you in a second, is a little larger than the other, and that's on purpose because it folds up nicer that way with the dimensional pockets. So, you have your front this is how it's going to fold. Your one inch spine is on the left, and I think this is one and a quarter to one and a quarter inch spine. Yes, your one and a quarter inch spine stays on. Let me start over. Your one and a quarter inch spine stays on the left hand side because this is your front flap. So your front flap is right next to your one and a quarter. Your one inch spine stays to your right. And it's important for when we go to cover the papers and put the ribbons on. You're gonna understand why. So what I'm gonna do is get out my ribbon and you're gonna need two pieces of ribbon at eight inches. So I'm gonna see if I can just cut mine at 16 and then I'm gonna fold it in half and you at least want eight inches because you want to have be able to tie a nice bow to the side so I'm going to use some double-sided tape put a little piece on my ribbon here And this is my front cover, so I'm going to make sure I try and get that in the center and put that down. I'm going to take another piece and lay that right on the top. This is the outside cover, my friends. I'm just gonna fold it out so we can put our mats on. Okay, so I have my front cover ribbon closure, one and a quarter spine. This is actually the back cover, the middle piece. My one inch spine 
and this is a flap that goes on the inside. So since this is my back cover, that's where I want to add my ribbon. And I'm going to try and get it across from this one, just like that. And I'll add another piece of double-sided tape to the top. Now your front cover and your back cover mats, decorative mats, we're going to put those on. Um, they you're going to need two of them that measure six and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. The other ones are going to be a little bit shorter because there's going to be pockets on those pages and I figure why waste the nice decorative paper. So I'm going to mat my front cover six and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And this is my back cover. And then you're going to need four pieces, four decorative mats, and those measure four and a half inches high by two and seven eighths wide. So this one, let's see which one I did, um, the green trucks, I'm going to put on this one right here, four and a half by two and seven eighths. And you're going to want to put it towards the top and then the pocket will go down here. Okay, so let's just mat the inside and then we'll go ahead and mat our spines. All three of these mats are the same size as the one we just did. Which is four and a half. by two and seven eighths. Get the last one on here and then we're going to do our spines. Okay, so since this is my one inch spine, you're going to need two of them that measure six and seven eighths by seven eighths. One for the inside and one for the outside. And then your one and a quarter inch spine, you're going to need two mats that measure six and seven eighths by one and one eighth. Guys, I'm so excited about the hot cocoa one that I could fit hot cocoa in there. I just keep thinking about it now. Like, what could I add in the flat pockets? I'm going to add a gift card in one, but i got to figure out what I'm going to add in the other one for my niece. <laughs> my mind is on that right now. Sorry, guys. Okay. Get our spines done. 
and then we are going to start on our pockets. I love this paper. I think I'm going to make a 6x6 six six accordion album with this. I just think it's so pretty. So I still haven't written out my Christmas cards and got them out yet, and my mom already sent hers out. She's like so ahead of the game. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to close this up, and we're going to set this aside, and we're going to work on our pockets. Now, I have already have two kind of ready to go, okay? You're going to need two pieces that measure four and seven eighths by four inches to create the dimensional pockets. We're going to do that first. I have one done to save some time. Let me make sure I'm in camera here. You're going to line it up at the four and seven eighths mark and you're going to score at a half an inch and then again at one inch. Turn it around and line it up at four inches because this is going to be the bottom of our pocket. You're going to do the same thing. Score at a half inch and one inch. And then you're going to go directly across from these score lines. Line it up so it's four and seven eighths. Score at a half inch and again at one inch. And then this part here, we're not going to score at all because this is the top of our pocket. I'm going to set my scoreboard aside. And we're going to fold up our score lines. And I'm going to burnish them with my, just press them down with my bone folder. So just like this pocket you see here, we cut off the corners of the pocket. And we're going to do the same to this one. So you'll have two over here. And we're going to cut off this corner here. This is this is the side of your pocket and this is the pocket the piece of the pocket we're going to glue on. So you're going to want to fold this. You're going to put a little bit of glue right in here. You're going to fold it up and you basically want this piece to match up with this piece and you want your corners to match. So I usually put my fingers like this together. I join them together just so those close up properly. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue here and just close it up. And hold it there for a second till it dries. And then I'm going to put my finger underneath and press down really well. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Put a little bit of glue here and make sure these two pieces meet up in the corner. So you have your sides. Now see that got wonky. And I don't like that. <laughs> so I'm going to just peel this up a little bit 
And that's something you really want to make sure you don't make it wonky or your pocket's not going to lay. You're basically just folding it up and meeting the two sides together. And then you want to make sure it's straight. Okay, I'm going to run my bone folder on the inside there. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Fold them in so you have a half inch around the sides, the bottom, and the side, and then this is the top of your pocket. I'm going to fold these two sides in, add some glue, and flip this up and make sure my sides meet. looks pretty good guys and then I'm going to run my bone folder okay and then I usually just clip off the corners here you don't have to do that I just like to do it because it makes things slide in a little bit easier okay and then your mats for your pockets one and the truck. Okay, so your mats for your pockets here. These measure two and seven eighths high by two and three quarters across. Now the top of my pocket as you see here in the folio. I made a kind of fancy cut. You don't have to do that, um, but I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay. So I have my, where is my punch guys? Here it is. I have this punch that I got. It's a two inch punch from the paper studio and I'm just going to turn it around. I'm going to take the top of my mat. I'm going to try and get close for you guys. And I'm just going to kind of line it up and I want to make sure I have it in the center and I just made a little cut like that. Now I'm going to glue it to my pocket. I'm going to flip it around, press it down real good, and then I'm going to go in again. Same way, push in, and I'm going to line it up. You see how my center of my, my thing here is lined up with the cut that I made. I'm just going to line it up, and then I'm going to pull back a little bit so I get a white edge. And that's how it looks. I'll do it again on this one. This is going to be the top. So I'm going to put it in my cutter. Make sure it's centered on the sides here with my fingers. And then I'm going to make that cut. And you could do it with any decorative punch that you think might look right. Like I was going to do a circle punch but I do that a lot on pockets and I thought this might look cool so I tried it and it worked. Okay so I'm on my bone folder on the inside of the pocket make sure that mat is down real nice. I'm going to go back in, line it up right at the edge there and then I'm going to pull back a little bit so it ends up having that white border at the top. So now we got the two harder pocket po pockets. Harder pockets completed. We're gonna make 
the flat pockets. You're going to need two pieces of cardstock that measure three and seven eighths by three and a half. Line it up on your scoreboard at the three and seven eighths mark, and you're going to score it a half an inch. Turn it, line it up at three and a half, score it a half inch, and then turn it again so you're directly across from the first score line you made. You should be lined up at three and seven eighths, and you're going to score it a half an inch again. So basically, a half an inch on three sides the bottom and the two sides. And we're going to fold our score lines. And we are going to cut our little corners off. We're going to flip them around and we're going to mat the fronts. Okay, so this guy is going to go on this one. I think this guy is going to go on this one. So, same size mats, two and seven eighths high by two and three quarters across. Oh, let me dry that off quick. I'm going to make the same cut that I did with the others, line it up, and then glue. I almost forgot that part. My gingerbread ones and my tree ones, I did not. I just made a plain pocket. I didn't um, do this fancy cut to them. Push in, line it up, and then pull back. And then I'm going to fold my two sides in, put a little bit of glue on this corner and this corner, and fold the bottom flap up. Run my bone folder over it, and this pocket is complete. And I'm just going to cut those corners off. One more pocket, guys, and we are done and ready to put on our folio. Two center flaps, glue at the bottom, and close that flap up. Okay, so on this one with the cars, I put this red striped flat pocket on, so I'm just going to add glue to those flaps that we made. I want to line up the edges of my pocket with the edges of the mat here. And the bottom of the pocket, you don't want to go all the way to the bottom. Just kind of want to pull back on that a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. Just want to leave about 16th of an inch or whatever down here of just the white cardstock paper. You don't want to go directly to the bottom. I mean you can, but you don't have to. Okay, so we have our front cover, our back cover, and now this first flat pocket. So we're going to open it up, and the one with the packages here, 
I did a flat pocket. Oh, I didn't cut my... I'm forgetting some steps here, guys. Sorry. Okay. So it's pretty much flat pocket, flat pocket, and then the dimensional pockets. Just add glue to those flaps and line it up at the bottom and then make sure your sides are lined up with the mats that you put on there. So just kind of glue it down and then make sure my flaps aren't like spread out. And I'm going to turn it around and run my bone folder along the inside of those flaps to make sure they're pressed down really well. But you don't want to get, sometimes when you glue your flaps, I'm going to show you, they could spread out. If they spread out, they're going to get into your crease here or your score line, and then when you go to fold it up, it's not going to fold for you. So you really want to make sure on the sides here you are lined up with the sides of your photo mat. That's really important. Same thing here. Right now, I'm looking at the bottom of my folio, but now I'm checking out to make sure my sides are right in line with my mat. I'm going to press down gently and then run my bone folder over. And just make sure when you run your bone folder on the inside to make sure those are pressed down, make sure you don't push out with your bone folder. So go back and take a look. And that's it guys. That's how I created my folio. Like I said, the snow, I pretty much just cut swirlies and layered them up on my box here glued them on and then trimmed off the sides and then decorated the box. But that's how I created these. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you give it a try. And if you do, let me know. I'd love to see your video or your photograph. Maybe you could let me know on Instagram and I'll come over and check yours out. Thank you so much, guys. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up as it helps my channel. And I appreciate you so much. Take care and happy crafting.